Hello and welcome to the Daily Synopsis by Bar and Bench, where we give you a brief summary of the most important legal news of the day. The Delhi High Court on Friday passed an interim order directing historians Audrey Trushke, Rohit Chopra, and Ananya Chakravarti to not publish any content alleging plagiarism on part of historian Vikram Sampath in relation to his works on V. D. Savarkar. Justice Amit Bansal also noted Twitter's offer to take down the tweets in question if Sampath provides the URLs of the same. Sampath had approached the Delhi High Court with a defamation suit seeking 2 crore in damages from Trushke and others. He also sought a permanent injunction on the publication of a letter dated February 11th written by these historians to Emma Griffin, who is the president of the Royal Historical Society in Britain. In the letter, Trushke and others had alleged that they had found a long-standing and a pervasive pattern of plagiarism in the works of Sampath, who was recently elected as a member of the society. The Calcutta High Court on Friday dismissed a public interest litigation seeking the removal of West Bengal Governor Jagdeep Dhankar. The petition filed by a lawyer, Ram Prasad Sarkar, claiming that the governor was a Bharti Janata Party member and was acting as its mouthpiece, was heard and decided by a division bench of Chief Justice Prakash Srivastava and Justice Raja Rishi Bhardwaj. A Delhi court has recently refused to grant an interim injunction to restrain content creator Samdish Bhatia from publicly speaking about the allegations of sexual harassment that he has levelled against CEO of Scoop Whoop Media, Satvik Mishra. Bhatia had registered a sexual harassment complaint against Mishra and his wife and the same as before a grievance committee constituted under the Sexual Harassment of Women at the Workplace Act. Samdish also published an Instagram post publicizing the sexual harassment that he had faced. While refusing to grant the injunction, the court said that the expression of a victim's trauma is his or her fundamental right that can only be curtailed if it comes under defamation or contempt of court, offends against public decency or morality, undermines national security or threatens to overthrow the state. Since the present case did not fall in any of the above-mentioned categories, the court declined to grant interim relief. On day 6 of the hearing related to the hijab row in the state, the Karnataka High Court today heard arguments on behalf of the state by Advocate General Prabhuling Nawadgi. A.G. Nawadgi told the High Court that wearing of the hijab must have to pass the test of constitutional morality as laid down by the Supreme Court in the Sabri Mala and the triple talaq cases. Outlining the stand of the state on the controversy, he said that the government order dated February 5 is in consonance with the Karnataka Education Act, that wearing of hijab is not an essential religious practice of Islam, and that the right to wear a hijab cannot be traced back to Article 191A. The hearing of the case will continue on Monday. A special court in Gujarat has sentenced to death 38 of the 49 convicts accused in the 2008 serial blasts in Ahmedabad. The remaining 11 have been sentenced to life imprisonment. The court had earlier convicted the accused under various laws including murder, sedition and waging war against the state under the Indian Penal Code along with provisions under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, the Arms Act and the Explosive Substances Act. Special Judge A.R. Patel also awarded a compensation of 1 lakh to the victims of the serial blasts. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon.